Hello, Happiness the Bounder, and welcome back. So as we continue our chat all about the five things to have a happier and healthier relationship, I really wanna dive into expectations. And I think that this is a funny little topic about relationships because we all have expectations of what a great relationship should look like. We all have expectations of how our partner should be behaving, expectations of everything else, but we very rarely set expectations of how we think we should be behaving. Or we very rarely set those expectations verbally, out loud, or even in a written contract, <laughs> depending on how you want to look at it. We very rarely say these things to the people we have these expectations of. Which is why we fall into this trap of like, I'm not a mind reader. I didn't know you wanted that. If you wanted that and you had told me, I would have done it. How many of you guys have had something like that happen in your relationships? <laughs> I laugh because it's so true though. If I have an expectation that you behave a certain way and then you don't do that and I get mad and you're like, why are you mad? I had no clue that's what you wanted. Then it's not the other person's fault. It's yours for not setting those clear expectations. So that's what I wanna talk about today. I wanna to talk about setting expectations for yourself having expectations for the relationship and your partner, and then how to communicate those. So first and foremost, expectations for yourself. Again, so often we look at other people and we have expectations for them, but we don't have expe expectations for how we should be behaving. And what I mean by that is, is that when you are faced with a situation, we all think we're gonna behave a certain way, but that doesn't guarantee it. And I mean, obviously nothing can guarantee it. However, if you have expectations of this is what I'm going to do in this situation, if it were to come up, then you know how you want to react instead of kind of flying by the seat of your pants. And I mean that both in positive and negative circumstances, right? Something great happens. How am I going? What am I expecting myself to be doing? How do I expect myself to be acting? And this is a non-romantic relationship example, but I had a person in my life, non-romantic, but I had a person in my life that I saw this person behave in a lot of ways that I did not think were acceptable, but they were behaving in these ways towards people who could easily set boundaries themselves. So I just said, hey, I think that's inappropriate. I think that's unacceptable, but you're gonna do what you're gonna do to set those boundaries with that individual. And those boundaries never really got set. It just kind of kept on getting swept under the rug. And I knew that some point down the line, if this person got brave enough, they would behave this way towards me. Because it's been, everyone around them says that it's okay. And I haven't said anything. So I just knew I'd be next on the docket at some point. And I said to myself, all right, when this situation happens, how am I going to behave? What are my expectations for myself? And of course, when the situation happened, I had said, I will not tolerate it. I will shut that down. I will do it politely and kindly, but very assertively and say, this is unacceptable. I do not think this behavior is appropriate. I do not appreciate it and you need to stop. Nicer than that, but that's the gist. And when I did that, this person retaliated even further. And I was like, all right, well, the expectation has been set that I would behave this way. And if it continued going, I already knew that I would block this person. I would shut them out because I was not going to tolerate this behavior. They were obviously not open to changing or to hearing anything opposite of that they're this great, amazing person behaving poorly. Um, so I cut them out, shut the door on that. That was my expectation for myself. And here's the thing about that. I didn't feel guilty for doing it because I had set that expectation. I had set that game plan in motion. Similar concept, much more positive and romantically involved when my husband proposed to me. I knew that if he was going to propose, we would have to have a serious conversation about children and what that would look like and what expectations I would need to set and how that would go down. So he proposed to me 20 minutes later after he proposed, we had a very serious conversation about 
the ability to have children. And that's, that was a very clear expectation in our relationship. And it's something that we have been married for seven years now. We've been together for 10 and this second time around, it's a whole story, but that has been an expectation that's been very clear. And because we have that expectation in our marriage, we can have clear communication about it. There is no guessing, there is no concern. And if there is concern, we can talk about it and adjust those expectations. But in both of those instances, that was not me saying, okay, well, if this other person does this, I expect them to behave this way. No, that was me setting expectations for myself. And we don't regularly do that. I mean, those are my two examples I can think of off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are more. But it's something that like, until you're in the situation you don't want to think about or you don't want to quote unquote worry about, I'm not saying you need to worry about it or overanalyze, but I am saying that consider if you set an expectation for who you want to be and how you want to behave, when those situations come around, if they come around, you already know what to do. And you take that ownness, right? That responsibility, that accountability of how you are behaving in that relationship, in that situation and circumstance on yourself, which is so empowering. And quite frankly, I'm gonna say responsible and respectful and honest <laughs> and opens up lines of communication. All things that we want in a relationship. So the next component of that is once you've set these expectations for yourself, you need to set and have those discussions with your partner. What are those expectations that you have for them? And are they fair? Are they unrealistic? What does that look like? And it's not like, hey, um, I expect you to do this, so there you go. No, it's, I have this expectation of my partner. And it's funny enough, my husband and I had this too. I have an expectation, whether you agree with it or not is up to you, but I have an expectation that my partner will not look at porn and will not go to strip clubs and things of that nature. It's just not something I'm comfortable with. It's not something I think is valuable. It's not something that I think is worth the time and the money and that could be better spent elsewhere. And I think it's more damaging than in any way helpful. That's my like, that's, I know that's my expectation for a relationship. I have set that for myself. So when my husband and I first started dating, I set that expectation. Hey, I'm not the girl for you. If you enjoy doing these things or you like can't give up these things or whatever it is. I'm not asking you to, I'm just saying like, this is my expectation for a partner in a relationship. And if you are unable to do that or you feel like that's unfair, let's have this conversation right now. But like, let's talk about it. Instead of it happening and then me being upset and freaking out about it, it's knowing my expectations up front, clearly communicating and having a discussion around it. So that's how you have that communication and those expectations with your partner. And that's how I do it. Obviously there's other ways, but I do think that having clear expectations for yourself, clear expectations with your partner, with not necessarily for or to, you create those expectations through conversation together. And that's where the honesty, the trust and the respect that are the previous three episodes of the series all come into play. So I promise they do build on each other, but I feel like I preached a little bit more than I normally do, but I want you to take a look at the expectations you've set for yourself. Have you just been letting things kind of go and then you're like, oh, I behaved in a way I necessarily didn't want to, or this took me by surprise. How can you get in front of those in the future? And then also, how are you at setting expectations with your partner? How are you at having those open conversations about what you expect from each other, right? It is twofold. And I think there's obvious ones, but you should still have the conversation of like, hey, I expect that as my partner, you're not gonna cheat on me. I expect that as my partner, you're not gonna have a romantic relationship, whether physical or emotional, unless it's with me. I expect you're gonna communicate with me if you have problems, all of those things. So I want you to take a look at that in your life and look at the expectations you have for yourself and for others, and if you've clearly communicated them. So I'm gonna leave you with that today. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Set those expectations and above everything else, remember, you are capable of happiness abound.